Do you learn best when information is presented to you in visual formats like photos, videos, diagrams, and charts? Do your thoughts wander during lectures? Do you have a hard time remembering material delivered to you in spoken words like directions, podcasts, and audiobooks? Do you think in pictures and have a vivid imagination? Do you often close your eyes and try to recall information by visualizing your notes or pictures? Do you prefer reading books that have lots of pictures and graphics? Do you have a hard time remembering people's names but can easily visualize their faces? Do you enjoy seeing neat and color-coded notes? If you answered yes to these questions, you might be a visual learner. Did you know that the effective use of visuals can decrease learning time, improve comprehension, enhance retrieval, and increase retention? Studies show that our brain processes visual information 60,000 times faster than text and that visual aids in the classroom improve learning by 400%. Today I'll be sharing my top tips on how to study better as a visual learner. So if you find yourself struggling in school, keep watching. My first tip is to draw diagrams. Not only is drawing fun, but a new study shows that drawing is superior to activities such as reading or writing. Drawing forces the person to process information in multiple ways, visually, kinesthetically, and semantically. Across a series of experiments, researchers found drawing to be a powerful way to boost memory and increase recall by nearly double. My second tip is to use graphs and charts in your notes. Try to use different colors to help you distinguish between the data. Studies show that ideas presented graphically are easier to comprehend and remember than those presented as words. My third tip is to draw mind maps or concept maps. Drawing mind maps is a method of visual brainstorming and can help the brain make connections between concepts. Drawing mind maps can also help simplify complex ideas, memorize information, and it can be more fun than simply writing blocks of text. This makes mind maps very appealing to visual learners as we can be as creative as we want to be. When you draw mind maps, you're able to see the big picture. My fourth tip is to color code your notes. When writing your notes, color should be used with a purpose and not aimlessly. This means that only a limited number of colors should be used and each color should only be used for a very specific purpose. To give you an example, the majority of the notes should be written in black, key terms written in red, definitions written in green, examples written in blue, and main headings are colored using highlighters. I would recommend using no more than four pen colors and no more than four highlighters because you need to remember what each color means and using lots of colors can overcomplicate your notes. The aim of color coding is to be consistent. Using the same color scheme across all your notes and all your classes can help your brain quickly recognize each color and the meaning of the individual colors will become second nature. For example, when you see the color red, you automatically know it's a key term and when you see the text highlighted, you know you're looking at a new subheading. Last thing I want to say about color coding is try not to worry about it during lectures. Color coding during the lecture can interrupt your note taking flow and distract you from the lecture itself. Instead, try to color code your notes after the lecture. Not only will this give you the opportunity to review your lecture again, but it will also allow you to organize your notes. My fifth tip is somewhat related to the first four tips, and it is to try replacing line notebooks with blank pages or a sketchbook. Some students find that having lines on their pages can cause visual disturbances and distractions when reading their notes and may restrict their ability to express their thoughts and ideas. If you feel similarly towards line pages, my advice would be to use gray paper with white lines instead of the traditional black lines, or use a sketchbook instead to reduce visual stress. All the stationery and supplies used in this video are linked in the description box below. My sixth tip is to replace words with symbols or abbreviations. This simple tip can help speed up the process of note taking simply by the fact that you save time by not writing out every word in full. It also gets visual learners to associate symbols with concepts rather than words, which increases the strength of association. A study shows that it only takes about a quarter of a second for the human brain to process and attach meaning to a symbol. By comparison, it takes us an average of six seconds to read 20 to 25 words. My seventh tip is to organize your notes. Disorganized notes are off-putting to most students, but especially those who are visual learners. Organizing your subjects into different binders and using different color tabs to separate different topics within each subject can help you feel more in control and less overwhelmed by the course's content. If you're a digital note taker, organize your notes into separate folders, whether it's on your iPad or on your laptop. You can also use note templates to keep your lecture and revision notes clean and tidy. You can create note templates using Microsoft PowerPoint. Alternatively, you can also download note templates from my Etsy link below. My eighth tip is to use a monthly calendar to organize your schedule. Whether you use a digital or traditional scheduling system, a monthly calendar can help you organize your life and your schoolwork. Try to avoid putting lots of to-do things on your calendar. This makes your calendar really crowded and it makes really important due dates not stand out as well as they should. My advice is to have a separate to-do list. Most good planners will have a separate section for to-do lists. There are also lots of to-do list apps out there. Your calendar should only be reserved for your most important dates such as important due dates, tests, exams, your personal important dates like birthdays, anniversaries, and etc. I try to use color red for the most important dates like exams. Seeing your commitments in front of you in a calendar form can help you plan ahead and manage your time wisely. Being able to manage your time allows you to allocate more time to studying and ultimately do better in school. My ninth tip is to write down a list of your lectures. 
This may seem really obvious and simple, but it's important to know exactly what you have revised and what you haven't. I like to create a chart with three columns and as many rows as needed. In the main column, I write down the name of the lecture and in the other two columns, I create checkboxes for having seen the lecture and having revised the lecture. By writing down a list of lecture names, you can see exactly what lectures you've attended and which ones you have revised. Not only will this help me keep track of my lectures, it also helps me visualize how much time I need to dedicate to each course based on the amount of content I must know. My 10th tip is to create a spaced repetition schedule close to exam time. The aim of a study schedule is to help you visualize your academic strengths and weaknesses because one of the most difficult things when studying is to know exactly what you have grasped and what you haven't understood yet. Spaced repetition works based on the forgetting curve discovered by Hermann Ebbinghaus in the 1800s. The forgetting curve demonstrates the pattern in which the brain naturally forgets learned information. If you review the material when your brain would naturally forget it, you are likely to retain more of the information in the long term. You can create a space repetition schedule similar to the one you can see here using PowerPoint. When using a space repetition schedule, you can write down the goals you're wanting to achieve prior to your exams. My main goals for every subject is to read over lecture slides, review my flashcards, review my laboratory practicals, and attempt online practice quizzes. I attempt each goal three to four times prior to my exams, if possible. Each attempt is spaced apart by three days after initial review, one week, and one month. This is why I usually start revising one month prior to final exams, even though new materials are still being taught. After each attempt, I write the date and highlight it with the appropriate color based on how well I know the material. I use green for good understanding, yellow for somewhat understanding, and red for not ready yet. For material colored in green, I dedicate the least amount of time to as I know the material better, and instead allocate that time to the material colored yellow or red. This means I spend less time on things I already know and more time on material I am less comfortable with. Being able to physically see my strong and weak points in the course using colors allows me to understand my top priorities and schedule my timing accordingly. My 11th tip is to sit at the front of the lecture hall. You might ask why is this important for a visual learner? Visual learners are often easily distracted by what is happening around them. If you sit at the back of the lecture hall, there are lots of people sitting in front of you. Some talking during lectures, some play video games, and some browse social media under devices. You may think that this only affects their academic performance, however that is often not the case. Research has shown that students who sit behind classmates using laptops for purposes other than coursework do worse than their peers. So if you're a visual learner, my advice would be to sit at the front of the classroom where you can see the lecture slides well, and to not sit behind students who use their computers for pastimes such as surfing social media and watching cute cat videos as we all know those are impossible to resist. My 12th tip is to watch videos on topics you don't understand. Videos are an amazing guide for visual learners. Studies show that people can remember the content of 2,500 words with over 90% accuracy 72 hours after looking at them for only 10 seconds. A year later, the same participants had 63% recall of those same images. With traditional lecture format delivery, students only remember 10% of the material delivered 72 hours later. So you're much more likely to remember something if you've seen it than if you've heard it. My next tip is to create practice tests, flashcards, and complete past papers. These are all active recall techniques. Active recall techniques have been proven to be very effective for learning and memorization. If your school does not provide past papers, you should produce questions while studying lectures from the beginning of the semester. If you make questions continuously from the start of your course, near the exam time you will have a large bank of questions you can go back to for revision. An alternative is to make flashcards. You can use traditional flashcards or apps like Anki and Quizlet. I personally use Anki as I find that the build-in algorithm is very effective and the extremely minimalistic and simple interface prevents distractions and helps me stay focused. That's it, you've made it to the end. Let me know what study techniques you use in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and have found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching, see you next time.